All right, we are back. We, Rick, took a couple of weeks off here. Yes, um, we did. Not necessarily intentionally. We were planning on doing a podcast two weeks ago. It was actually the week of the CrossFit Games, and we were going to do a podcast with a couple of guests the first night of the CrossFit Games on that Thursday. And we chose to appropriately not do a podcast mm -hmm. that night. The events of that day were were significant, and it, it certainly would have made sense. And we took last week off from the podcast because things were just going to be quiet on the social on the socials out there. And we right. felt like that was appropriate yep. as well. But it is nice to see you again. Nice Likewise. to uh, be back on the podcast. Have you been? How has games training been going for you? Uh, yes, other than texting you back and forth and an occasional message, it's nice to see you and catch up. Uh, I know as a Boulder athlete, I'm you know what I'm up to. So I do, uh, I, you much. know. And uh, what you don't hear is me cursing at you in the early yes. mornings or the late evenings. I'm kidding. No, no, no. I like it. Uh, it's uh, it is it is a busy time of the year. I say this all the time, but who? When isn't it a busy time for everybody? You're juggling a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in my case, it was a power outage. Which, uh, for those that weren't aware, we had a full week of power lost here in Northeast Ohio due some some tornadoes and storms that ripped through, and uh, then some school moving and. We're back. And you know what? Oh, by the way, the clock is still ticking for Birmingham. So it's called get the work done. So it, it sure is. To. You know, in the past couple of weeks, I've had some travel mm -hmm. uh, and out to Colorado, back from Colorado, out to the CrossFit Games and back. Gratefully, gratefully not 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 sick from all that travel. Mm -hmm. I, I know you've been busy and and, you know, I know we're just doing everything we can to stay healthy. Right to be fit, to be prepared for Birmingham next week, which is crazy that it's next week. The time has gone so slow. It's been so long since we've done semifinals. Correct. Correct. But then when we get here, it just feels like it's way too soon. Like, are we, are we really ready for this? You know? Uh, well, I think, yeah, it's, I think if you ask and poll all the athletes, the teams and everybody that's going to be down in Birmingham, they'll probably say this was longer than necessary, but we know this was not left this was not by choice. This was based on the schedule and what they could do reserving a venue large enough for this. I, I suspect it's going to be a lot tighter turnaround next year, and it'll be welcome for those that are, are um, fortunate enough to qualify. You're not going to have yeah. your entire summer dominated by training and being careful, not getting injured, not getting sick, generally watching what you're eating, all that. You know, you, you actually bring up a really good point. I haven't thought, I haven't, I was thinking about this, but not as much until you just said that. Like, really, when we have the games at the end of August in particular, mm -hmm. there is, there's not a lot of wiggle room in the summer mm -hmm. to, to do adventurous things, to do wild things with our kids. Mm -hmm. I am now in the mode where, like, I'm not overly playing soccer in the yard just just for the, the next couple of weeks like mm -hmm. yeah boys we're probably not gonna i'm not gonna slide tackle either of you guys <laughs> my my yeah. seven and eleven year old in the yard i just don't want to like snap an ankle and in two weeks it's a free-for-all like let's go mm -hmm. let's yeah. let's go Absolutely. do dangerous things let's get the chainsaw out let's down some trees let's make some firewood we'll do all the things we do on our property here but for the next two weeks or the next uh, you know nine days uh, yeah that we're down to now it's it's uh just be smart be careful don't do stupid things i'm not yesterday i was walking around in my house without crocs on i mm. stepped on a lego not and good. i almost took myself out of the games yeah, yeah i was i'm almost yeah. Almost withdrew. I have my slides on right now. I cannot, even though they're not the most comfortable, I cannot go in the house without them. I'm afraid of <laughs> kicking a door, which I'm notorious for, and I'm not going to break yes. a bone in my foot. I'm not going to step off and step wrong. I'm this is specifically it. how you know yeah. that we are in the master's demographic right yeah. here, because we are afraid of tripping out of clumsiness oh, and, yeah. and hurting one of our toes, because yep. that's it. You're done. Yeah. Hey, um, and, and COVID, in, in seriousness, you know, this has been a summer, not being an alarmist, but I feel like COVID has been more in the news. And it's not just the news, it's people we all know. A lot more folks have gotten it. Now it's not as as generally not as harmful. It doesn't knock you out forever. But when you start talking about a respiratory infection, for all of us, that's the last thing you want. So yes, I just yep. knock on wood you know, we've all been around a lot of people all summer long, uh, you know, just hope that you're, you know, we're not wearing masks. So we're just, just, yeah. 
and hope, hope for look the best. between now and the games and and when we see the games when i come in for that knuckle bump yeah it is Not um a handshake it's just knuckle, yeah. it, it's i'm generally a clean person but you know i'll shoot i'll end up hugging people and stuff like yeah. that once we're there it's we're in it and uh you know and it's fine this episode is powered by thirdsy your go-to for game-changing sleep recovery imagine hitting your workouts harder and waking up feeling unstoppable that's what Thirdsy's PM Recovery Collagen does for me. It's like pre-workout, but for your sleep, fueling your body's active recovery processes without any melatonin or sedatives. Just one scoop before bed supports deeper, more restorative sleep so you can crush your fitness goals. Ready to experience the best rest and recovery? Visit thirdsy.com and transform your nights into recovery power hours. Thirdsy, because sleep is the ultimate recovery tool. That's T-H-I-R-D-Z-Y. Dot com. Save 20% with code Jason ZZZ. Let's get into the show. You know, it's been an interesting couple of weeks in CrossFit, and I, I think it makes sense for us to talk about just for a second. It, it's been talked about on every podcast and every CrossFit news channel for the past couple of weeks. So it's, I don't think we're going to add a, a tremendous amount of light to the story of Lazar and his passing mm-hmm. at the CrossFit Games, but we do. I think want to want to mention that it's. I'm sure that for you and for me, we both remember the moment we heard. Oh, absolutely! Uh, it's one of those moments. I I watched the stream. I saw the finishers. A couple finishers hit the finish line. Jumped in the shower. Got out of the shower. Was planning on heading to the to to the games that morning. Mm-hmm. Um, after the swim to watch the the next events, and all of a sudden, my phone blew up with text messages. Correct. And uh, similar with you. Yes. I mean, I was at work yeah. and, and I was starting yeah. my day not really focusing on it because I just didn't have time at that moment. But when my phone started going off and I was trying to piece together the little bit of information I was getting, it's the that feeling in your stomach like this, this isn't real. This has got to be a mistake. Something, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Be- because yeah. you and I have, you've told your story certainly a lot okay. more publicly than I have, but you know, a great majority of us have probably had a some kind of a panic attack in the water and just that feeling, not saying I know anything about, but what I mean is the water is, is dangerous. It can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, hearing that news was just the biggest gut punch I think I've had in quite a long time. Yeah. Especially with something that it's not baseball, football, basketball, or golf. It is a sport that we play that something happened to an athlete, you know, in our sport. Yeah that that's yeah. the that's the it, it 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 and that's i think what was you're exactly right it's it, it was very close to home for mm-hmm. such a for the community right mm-hmm. um for all of us to experience and you know those that were on site there had a closer experience and i think anybody that was in fort worth had a had an, an experience with that i had a curious position being in the press area and being able to uh, hear what it was like for the press to be uh, covering the story um, and then covering the athletes, you know, mm-hmm. photographing athletes on the floor. And, and when you're behind a lens and you've a 400 millimeter lens, a really long lens, you are, um, you're peering through a telescope at the, at the, at the closeness, it, almost mm-hmm. an intimate view yeah. of an athlete's face. Uh, you know, there was an, a, a photographer next to me and he was going through his images on his computer and we were talking and he said, it, it just feels, he doesn't know what to do with the images because they're too raw um raw you saw yeah. athletes raw on the floor just yep. uh, in just hurting and competing and barely able to hold it together you know some of them and, and photographers were really experiencing that secondary trauma of that if the athletes were felt that first person trauma there was some the photographers feeling right. a secondary trauma and it was a it was a really interesting um experience i think i texted you many times when i was out mm-hmm. there that i i spent more of my time in the press area than in the, in the, in the, in the, okay. the stadium, the arena. Yeah. Uh, it was just, I just couldn't find my, I just couldn't find uh it was, it was just my experience. I, I couldn't fully be a, a spectator. No, I was, yeah. I, I was curious. I'm, I'm still a fan of the sport, but it, there was just such this rift internally about, about watching and being part of the show, but also, you know what? The just, press room was quiet yeah. and I just could be in there and I could, I could observe the games and, um, and it's just, that was, that was how I approached it. Not right or wrong or anything. It just, that's, that was my weekend. Ready to get home at the end of the weekend. It was just, I bet, yeah, I was ready to get yeah, home. Generally, you're probably not saying that uh, at the yeah. end of the game. Well, one, lately you've been in an RV, so you are home. But, <laughs> right, um, right. but, but that desire to leave, 
like, okay, I got to get out of here. My time is done. Yeah. It's time to go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So and it was, it was, it was time to go home and it, it's not that it was necessarily better at home, but it was just, okay. Whew. Now, I mean, I was with some of my dearest friends at the games there and it was wonderful to see them. So not taking away from that experience in any way, but it was, yeah, it was very good to get home and honestly get back into rhythm of life something yeah. consistent and it, it was necessary to do that being that we've got something that we're preparing for but you know man we we have had lots of conversations around swimming and it's interesting because like you said the next announcement that we heard from crossfit which has been very quiet yeah. uh, around all of this and understandably that i'm sure they have to be very careful but that there is no swimming in future competitions or sanctioned competitions sanctioned competitions um, right until further notice i think is however it was phrased yeah yeah so that affects MFC, which you're competing in. Um, a lot of athletes are at, up at yep. MFC. We assumed they would probably not be swimming at the Masters CrossFit Games. And once we saw the schedule of events, that was confirmed there yep. would be no swimming regardless right. yep. of uh, of that. But then I'm at Wadapalooza, California in uh, late September, and that mm-hmm. also has had their swimming removed. Um, and <laughs> I said, I don't want to go swim in the ocean for time. Ah, it's just me. Different. I was yeah. pretty nervous about that already. Yep. So, uh Swimming in you know, open water in a lake, swimming in a pool, and then there's the ocean. Complete all. Listen, free. I get nervous in the ocean. Just, just the waves scare me. And I, and I've yeah. had a, I've had a, I've had a, I had a bad experience in waves one time. So yeah, that's I didn't want to do that anyway. You know, the next piece of news that well, well, I was going to say, go out to Southern California and just enjoy being on land. Be grateful for the company, <laughs> much. for the yes. the community, and just yep. enjoy the ocean and the sunsets and. Let the ocean oh, and I mean, sunset work together and not bother you. Be over there. And I yeah. it was one of my favorite things on the West Coast is to watch that sunset over the mm-hmm. ocean. Absolutely. Um, it's just fantastic. I don't need to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> so the other piece of news sure. um, it just came out today. You want to talk about that for a second? Oh, no, you got me. Wait. The uh, the, the PFAA. Oh, the P- oh, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm thinking okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'd like to toss. I like to toss them to you. And 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 not many times I swing and miss. I swung and miss. <laughs> Only because for those listeners, we and we expected to record tonight and talk about an event that we think could or could not be released, might be released by now. And you know, at the time of this recording, there's nothing. So we're you know, what else? But yes, the PFAA exactly. today did. Um, I don't have the language in front of me, but. Uh, did call for some changes, um, you know, one of them being uh, uh, transparent, greater or assured of transparency between the third party investigation and CrossFit and now PFAA. Um, the other big headline grabbing one that all you have to do is open up your phone and see on social media is that the PFAA has called for uh, Dave Castro to step down or be removed from the game, the, the game of sport. Uh, there at CrossFit, yep. not to be, you know, the headlines will say to be fired, this, that, and the other. No, I think it just says simply to be removed from director of sport and basically yep. in charge of the games. So, you know, and it, it was, the letter was signed. You see who all the PFAA board members are. Generally, it's their household names. No surprise. It's out there for, for people to look at and make your own determination yep. on. But yes, that was... Yep. Pretty interesting today. That I didn't expect that to come up uh, quite that quickly. I would right. say, but they—I mean, it's a self-organizing community there, uh, mm-hmm. and they chose to release that today. And again, kind of like you said, it's it's early. There's going to be a ton of press and follow-up and headlines about that, and it's not something that we're going to jump into right now. It's it's fresh, maybe, and it yeah, it's just not something we want to you know take a stab at. There's, there's be plenty of content out there on this and. Um, we're, we're I, I mean, members. I respect the organization for sharing. Yeah. So whatever. We're, yeah. Yeah. We're not yeah. members. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. know how it impacts the master's community and the teen teenagers and adaptives. Uh, yeah. With the exception of maybe changes made for the safety to guarantee the safety of the athletes would be filtered down and trickled down to all CrossFit sanctioned licensed events. So we'd be the beneficiary yeah. of some of these improved safety measures and standards. But yeah. You know, they're not coming to us asking for our opinion. You know, we're putting, again, a trust in those event organizers that are that are running the event for us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, speaking of our event organizers, let's shift gears. We had a call. Not swinging uh, and missing. From. 
Not, not swinging and missing, but we had a call from the organizers for the Masters CrossFit Games, which are uh, the team that runs the Legends Championship. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had a few calls with various age groups just to do really a Q&A last week and make sure that they could hear questions that we had and answer them right. and give us just, you know, start shedding some light onto our competition. In no order, Rick, what were some of the highlights for you from that call? I think some of the things we could have easily yeah. deduced. Yep. We also discovered it wasn't that day maybe it was the day before that we received the schedule or the heat schedule which we'll get into as well because those are sort of tied hand in hand and answer some Correct. questions that we had yeah we received the heat schedule yeah first and yeah. so then when we jumped on the call you know the way they went through it was okay you see what's in front of you and then of course the question comes up will there be swimming and all you had to do is look at the heat schedule and figure out uh, total number of events and that you have a time and you yep. have a location for every event and they all say inside the convention center. So yep. we were there, you know, t- they, they outline the number of events for the different age groups cuts mm-hmm. could still be occurring. I think that was to be determined. Most of the workouts yes. will be released before they'll save a few back, but here we are waiting yep. for a few to be released. I think what struck me and I'd like to, what do you think of the time domains? I think that leads us to answer some questions as well. I agree. One of the things they did mention with all of the events being at the convention center, Mm -hmm. all indoors. They also mentioned that indoors is quite chilly. So it's sweatshirt weather in there. Right. Um, But they said that there would be one event where we'll be headed outside to run and we'll come back inside and do some work. And there'll be four rounds of that. So we might spend two minutes at a time outside, maybe eight Mm -hmm. total minutes outdoors. And depending on the day next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday is supposed to be pretty toasty, like 96 degrees. Going out and running for two minutes is not not (laughs) going to kill us. You know, but uh, I mean, I'll tell you, the hotter, the better. Um, I do like hot weather. Um, to a, to an extent, yeah. um, I will say that I did train in Texas and it was extraordinarily hot, crazy, crazy hot. It was also a very hot week down there. Mm-hmm. If and if anyone was in Texas versus Birmingham, it's a different feel. Uh, more humid in Birmingham? It is more humid in Birmingham. So there's a, there's a lot of sweat. You're going to sweat. You're going to sweat inside. Yep. You're going to sweat in the, in the air conditioning because it's just more humid. It's not like if you've traveled to Mexico or, or Cancun or something, that's, that's crazy humidity. This yeah. is like, uh, I don't know if crazy is a level 10, we're at like level seven or eight humidity. Okay. Texas would be like a level six. Uh, we, it, yeah, we do get quite sweaty here. I, I will say that. It, yeah. I mean, I had a little bit of that this weekend in South Carolina, but, uh, there you go. I go for yeah. a run tonight. Our high in Northeast Ohio today was 68 degrees. They said it was the first time Wild. since early June that we had not hit 70 degrees. So I'm Oof. not doing any heat training here. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> not that I don't, don't want worry. to, but <laughs> yes, yesterday I finished a work. We actually, uh, we had a workout that had some running rope climbs and some snatches mm-hmm. and we didn't finish before the noon class started though. So, uh, one of the athletes moved our barbells outside so we could finish the workout. And we did half the workout out in the sun. And it was like doing snatches on a frying pan. It was oh. so hot. So hot. It was also just, I mean, it's noon in the middle of the day on black mats. But getting into these yep. tests. Um, so based on the heat times, the start and finish times of right. a heat, and then there's transition times baked into that. So we could almost say, uh, essentially, these are some rough estimate or these are some estimates of the time frames that you will be on the floor for these tests. Um, and so I'm going to go, we have 10 tests. I believe 55 plus has eight tests. Correct. Yep. Just like um, so test number one or on Thursday, there's three tests. Number one is 18 minutes. Number two is 12 minutes. Number three is three minutes. These are very, you know, mm-hmm. this isn't anything to speculate on. It makes a lot right. of sense. Like, you know, 18 minutes, there's a nice long one. I like a long workout. Uh, 12 minutes is one of those mid range. Uh, but the longest workout of the entire weekend is 18 minutes. We will say that, that there's no, there's no 25, 35, 40 minute workout. Right. There's not a, we're not running a 5k. We can say mm-hmm. that with sure. You know, we're not rowing a 5k. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can say that with a pretty, you know, pretty with clear. Certainty. We're obviously not swimming. Yeah, with certainty. What we would do for 18 minutes is is interesting. It feels like that could be one of those workouts where we do head outside yep. four times, yep. right? Yep. yep. Um, a bunch of work. They inside. mentioned that you'd be outside. Yeah, that could. It could be anything from, you know, the, the the thought that comes to my mind is that first 
uh, event at the CrossFit Games in 2019. It had a 400 mm-hmm. meter run, yep. three rope climbs, and then seven snatches. Yep. Uh, that is the kind of workout where you've got monostructural gymnastics, weightlifting as an opener. You just, mm-hmm. hey, you're going to start with general CrossFit. And, yeah. you know, yeah, it's a little bit higher skill. This is the CrossFit Games. But I could see something like that. Um, and people talk take, about that, you know, 18 one minutes. Of the, one of the more perfectly crafted workouts that uh, Dave has yeah. come up with. And Bob likes perfectly crafted workouts oh, from yes, the CrossFit Games. Yes, he does. <laughs> we'll see. Um, this is now on. I, it's being recorded, so we'll see how close we are. Exactly. I would now say 18 minutes is a tight, tight time frame mm-hmm. if it was the exact workout that was done yep. at the Games uh, for the individuals. But if it was scaled appropriately for Masters, uh, it, it, I think I think it could be possible. Or there could be some time caps in there, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, test number two is 12 minutes. I think that's, and, and unless you have another opinion, it's anything you yeah, do anything. anything in 12 yep. minutes can't even speculate but then we've got test three which is three minutes and what are some things that come to mind for you with uh three minute workouts not necessarily a lift believe it or not mm-hmm. I, I i think those those lifts have been they've been done at ends uh, end of workouts or you've had a snatch and a clean and jerk or a clean jerk and then snatch or and then spin mm-hmm. five minutes to establish a one rep max rest a minute and transition five minutes again so then you're talking in that 11 12 minute yeah. zone so three minutes to me conjures up those terribly awful row burpees or row deadlift or you know something mm-hmm. where two movements first movement is a sprint you know, pick calories on ski erg and then, you know, do burpees, bar facing burpees, something just miserable. Yes, please. Miserable like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Three minutes. And, you know, generally they want everybody finishing in two, two and a half. So. Right. It's not a lot of time to do whatever it is. It, you, you, you mentioned one of the workouts that we did in 2021 at Legends, which was a 25 or 30 calorie row. It was uh, some sort of a sprint row into five extraordinarily heavy. Very deadlifts. heavy. Yeah. I think I think 40 plus was 385, uh, oh. which was some people's one rep maxes, right? Oh. Um, so that was a race. The other thing that uh, could be in that three minute time frame, of course, it doesn't take three minutes to do this, but they also did this in 2020. They had that thruster ladder. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, you know, four thrusters, three, maybe it was a five, four, three, two, one thruster ladder. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and that could take a minute to 90 seconds. And if you were going to be cycling people through something like that, mm-hmm. um, and even having a time cap of three minutes, you, I could see something like that. I also think that anytime that legends has programmed and even the games has programmed, uh, for masters athletes that I can recall a max lift, mm-hmm. it's been on day one. Or something that would, I mean, it's almost like when you're training, like if you're going to go for a PR on an Olympic lift or on something that is extraordinarily explosive like that, you're going to do that early in the training session when you're freshest. I don't see us doing it on Sunday. Where I see on Saturday a five minute test. Yeah, Yeah, on Sunday, we're going to go for a max lift. That doesn't make sense. It seems, of course, anything can happen, but that seems less safe. I I hate Mm -hmm. to use that kind of word, but I feel like in that first day is if we're going to get tested with something heavy like that and even a sprint into something heavy or a ladder or something it could be uh in that maybe in that time range Mm -hmm. on uh on day one okay so day two we've got uh a 15 minute test and an 11 minute test we were just middle middle of the road right there on those two tests just two events Uh, that day yeah interesting yep 15 minutes and what'd you say 11 it's just general 11 isn't it yeah (laughs) no it really is gpp and that is what they actually said on the call. They did say that, hey, expect the workouts to be CrossFit workouts. Right. Um, we're not doing anything fancy. There's nothing you haven't done. Uh, I think they were reassuring us. Kept that, saying. Yep. A thousand times. Yeah, yeah, you would do this in a workout, yep. which is uh, really, good. really fun. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I like that. It's, while our sport is the known and the unknowable, mm-hmm. we aren't learning party tricks on this. So I, I would I. But I hear when he says something like that, I don't see us doing handstand pirouettes, unfortunately, because that's just that's not something you do every day in CrossFit. I don't see, mm-hmm. you know, ring handstand pushups or some of these. Tri- I don't see triple unders or double crossovers. So it's, right. We take out some of those real fringe type events. But now we've got 15 and 12 on that Friday. I mean, 15 minutes and 11 minutes. So 
we can just say we're going to be grinding on Friday. Mm -hmm. I I feel like that's just one of those days where you're getting some work done. And Saturday, yeah. Well, you'll be you'll, oh, go be, ahead. you'll be five events in at the close of uh, close of the day Friday. Yeah, you'll be halfway there. So, leaderboard so, leaderboard uh, jockeying and uh, <laughs> prognostications, everything will be occurring Friday <laughs> night. Half or half the points are half the points are done. And uh, I wonder if we ac- accumulated all the minutes. So we've actually the, the sh- now we move into generally shorter workouts Saturday and Sunday, right? Uh, with test six being the first one on Saturday, 14 minutes long. Again, that's right in that meaty part of the uh, uh, time frame. Then we move into test seven, which is eight minutes. Test eight is five minutes. So now we've got that eight minute time frame, which is, you know, whenever I see an eight minute workout, I think of a 2K row. I don't think we're doing a 2K mm-hmm. row, right. although that'd be awful if we were. But whatever you're doing in an eight minute time frame is going to have a feel like a 2K row. It's got that level of intensity to it. It's just short enough that you can hurt, but you, but not but not so fast that it's Fran like. You're not at a blistering pace, but mm-hmm. this is this is a mile run at a full sp- at, as fast as you can, or a row as fast as you can, or three rounds for a time. But it's in that, that really tricky Gnarly. time frame of yep. eight minutes. Yep. Yeah, eight minutes. Okay. And you know, again, they could in an eight minute time frame, they could test two lifts. I mean, it could unlikely, sure. but it, sure. I feel like it's just going to be some, some good old fashioned gnarliness there. With test eight finishing off Saturday as a five minute workout. Yeah, just um, five. Yeah. What do we do for five minutes? I, you know, I, I mean, my brain tries to think back to what have we done at the CrossFit Games that was five minutes? What have we done at the Legends Championship that's been in that five minute range? And there's not, there's not a ton. No. The first workout at no. the CrossFit Games in 2020, uh, oh yeah, 2019, the first workout for Masters was a 30 yep. calorie row into 30 bar facing burpees. That was it. Yep. Yep. And the times and, were about two minutes. I think some of the younger age oh, groups yeah. had sub two. Uh, yep. you know, our middle age group. No, were, they weren't sub two, sub three though. Not sub, sub two, sub three, sub like three, a, sub three. Sorry. Yeah. Sub three. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Um, that's, um, like, that's right. Like 35 to 39. I remember seeing numbers yeah. that were like eye popping. How do you go that fast? Yeah. I mean, you, you're, they're growing in the one twenties and then they're doing burpees, um, you know, so fast, maybe under two thirty, but 30 burpees for time is something you can really just go on like there's you, you don't tap the brakes you just go but that's that's what five minute workouts generally feel like or workouts that have that five minute time cap you've got grace in there you've got mm-hmm. isabel yeah you have uh you do have fran in that mix I and mean, we wouldn't be out of the question to to have fran in there so this sure. is really some gnarly now i want to back up and just say you know up until this point on saturday We've had some longer time domains, eight, 12, I mean, 18 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, one of the things that I speculate and that uh, okay. another one of our Boulder athletes, Mike McCaslin speculated, I think, I think this was for reals, but we're not positive. At the Legends Championship last year, there were rings hanging from the rig on the mm-hmm. day before the competition. And if you remember, we didn't use the rings at the competition at all. Right. And it, it turns out only. that... Yeah, it turns out that the rings, the fasteners to the rig didn't come in or didn't ship, so they couldn't use the rings. They weren't fastened correctly. And so they changed the workout that they were going to have and made it snatches, bar muscle-ups, clean and jerks, bar muscle-ups. It was this real grindy workout Mm -hmm. like that. What they were planning, again, speculation, what they were planning was the standard, which is Mm -hmm. 30 clean and jerks, 30 ring muscle-ups, 30 snatches. Um, or some sort of variant upon that, maybe 20, 20, 20, or, or right, something right. like that for Masters athletes. There's been rumors that Bob, and again, this is straight up rumors because we, we like rumors. We have no idea. And so we're, yeah. I, 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 we've heard from a guy, from a guy, from a guy that knows Bob from a guy um, mm-hmm. that Bob likes the standard. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. Um, the only spot that fits is test number one. And that would be, a, it's, it's pretty aggressive. You got to think 30, 30 clean and jerks could be three to four minutes if you're cooking. And then 30 ring muscle ups can take a or long masters. time. It's, you know, it's not that bad if it's just what you're doing. If you're only doing 30 ring muscle ups for time, you have that time. But if you're doing clean right. and jerks into that and then into power snatches, you have you have some fatigue building in there. And right. that's a really, really tough, tough spot. But if I was a betting person, if if we did the standard. Mm-hmm. it's got to be test number one. If that was be, mm. would be something that they wanted to test us with, you're going to open with a workout that just decimates you. And then you've got 
four more days. Just you well, never know. It, it never. I think it's uh, a lot of competitions have tried to really beat you down the first day to see then how athletes yeah. respond in subsequent days. So that yes. would not be out of the norm to right. you, you've got those longer tests. Let me go back to that. You've got those longer tests on Thursday. So we're going to, we're going to throw everything at you that first day and then see, yeah, um, hit you with shorter see if you, sprint, like probably high skill yeah. type of, uh, type of work. Yep. Yeah. With 10 events, yeah. I don't want to close out. I don't want to say something before Sunday, but yeah, Sunday is Sunday finishes with two workouts. Yeah. That we believe you'll be doing there. He said, let's put it this way. What was also said on the call was everybody will be working out four days. He mm -hmm. didn't say mm -hmm. you'll do all of the workouts. So I think that's when they meant right. the cuts could be still considered. So what was that? Two minutes on Sunday? We start out with a two minute workout. What is that? And that's I mean, every, everybody all up in arms. And then, uh, yes. what is that? Nine, seven, eight minutes for the final test. Is that right? Yeah, eight minutes. Yeah, that is two correct. Minutes, two minutes and eight minutes. Huh? I can't even think of what you do in two minutes, except for another. Again, if we think of that test number three being three minutes, test number nine being two minutes, mm -hmm. if they don't do a ladder, a the three on test number three, maybe it's a ladder on test number nine. We've always historically mm -hmm. seen ladders be like multiple layers. That's, you know, they do a ladder and then they bring it down to like the next Group tier of, of people. Right. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sort of a system that I think there's in two minutes, it's either a, a max something and it wouldn't be a max lift on day four. I just almost guarantee it's not a right. max lift on right. day four. Yep. So it could be like a 500 meter row, Ugh. which would also be tough because that's a time cap issue for uh, some of the athletes, but it could be a ladder uh, or it could be one of those weird skill tests that, uh, I, I mean, what would it be like if it was something like um, max rope, t max rope climbs in 90 seconds? Okay. Or, All right. I'd, I'd be fine with you that. Know? Don't tell me to sit in that four <laughs> foot square box and do max handstand and hold again. Oh, hey, I like that. Friends. Actually, you, yeah, you, let's do that. Gymnasts like that. I know. I, <laughs> let's I, do, Rick, you could stand on your hands. Look, oh, stop I it. Can, you were, but you, you got it. Two years ago, that bit me in the butt in semifinals. So. I mean, let's call it a, a max handstand walk and, uh, and let's just, you know, hey, let's do that, that. That has been tested at regionals. Remember that? Uh, I think that's oh, why Sam Briggs didn't come back and defend her title that year because it was a max Ooh. handstand walk. One attempt. You came down, you were done. Um, one attempt. Oh, I, and I that think, is so I think if you, made it, if you made it to the end of the floor, you could turn around and come back. Yes. But you could not break yep. before whatever the length yep. of the floor was. I just remember Scott Panchik and, going back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. yeah. He crushed that. I could see some insurance in there that like, if you don't make it the first 10 feet, you can restart. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, kind of like they yeah. did this at Wadapalooza a few years ago where like it was a freestanding handstand hold. If you fell down in the first 10 seconds, you could kick back up. Yeah, just um, get that CNS firing. So yeah, because you're, 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 you're freaking out. Your yep. nerves are just crazy there. You're so, yeah, I mean, it, those of you that are listening, if you want to leave some guesses in the comments um, as to what the two minute workout is, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, yeah. You know, I'll send I'll send someone a barbell apparel gift card for fifty dollars if they guess event number nine correctly. correctly. Okay. okay, just yeah, you you put it in the show notes. I mean, put it in the comments if you guess test number nine correctly prior to it being announced. Okay, obviously. Yes. yes. Um, then uh, <laughs> if so that does smart. happen, I will send a. I'll send a gift card out there. Some smart ass will try and game the system. <laughs> Seriously. Um, who, I mean, you know, who it could be. Um, okay. And test number 10 is going to be the last test. This is the final. It's an eight minute workout. Eight, eight minutes. Yep. Let's and, see. And I like that. I like that. I like that the final test is not a two minute test, but that the final test is eight minutes. And the question uh, mm -hmm. people probably have is, does the two minutes back right into the eight minute test? It does not. This nope. is not a back to back effort. There's there is time between a couple of hours between test number nine and test number 10. Yeah. To make that clear, this is not a back to back effort. None of these te now in these time frames, there could be back to back work, but all could of, be. all of these are separated by every age group is separated by yeah. at least an hour or two. You're not yeah. really going to be um, back out on the competition floor. You're going to have proper time to cool down, take yep. stock, and then warm back up again. Uh, it's not running yeah. from floor to floor.
And you, since you have the heat schedule in front yeah. of you, Rick, mm-hmm. I don't have that up. Uh, for our listeners that are going to come and watch, they have they do this thing which is really smart. They have uh, maybe for crowd control, also for athlete control, they have a batch of athletes that go in the morning and a batch of athletes that go in the afternoon. And I know that you had mentioned that you and I are afternoon athletes. Is that correct, Rick? Generally, afternoon athletes. That's right. Uh, yeah, fifty to fifty-four and forty-five to forty-nine. Um, yep, yeah, one o'clock. One o'clock starting roughly on Thursday. Uh, terrible, terrible. Two uh, forty-five on Friday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ten, ten o'clock, ten thirty on Saturday. It's these are start times. Okay. For general for our age group. Okay. And then Sunday we will start at call it twelve thirty. Okay. Not the finish okay. times, the start times. So. Yep. You know, very, so, very generous. And that's, again, the older age yep. groups will go earlier and the younger yep. age groups tend to start later, which is not unusual. Yep. But with three competitions, nope. fl- three competition floors, there is a lot of, um, you know, moving around. You will be on all of the floors. And he said two of the floors oh, have yeah. a rig. One floor doesn't. One floor has an yep. A-frame. The other has... What do you call it? I don't even remember. Regular? He, he called it something. Yeah, not, not a regular a, rig. Yeah, not a suit rig said. or something, but yeah, a regular rig. Now, he did mention, and this was curious in the call, that the field of play will have two sides on each floor yeah. where you'll have some athletes yeah. on one side working towards the center or towards from the center yeah. out yeah. and vice versa. So that is... Spectators down the middle like a spine. I mean, really interesting. Shows because how big that place is. It's really big, and but... Yeah. Uh, but um, but so did you understand on the same floor, yeah. you'll have athletes like if I'm in lane six and you're in lane seven, let's just say we were competing against each other. Would we be on opposite sides of the floor? Like, can I, will I know where you're at? Or is he saying on a, on a different floor, they'll be going in different directions. I thought my understanding was that the rig might be in the middle of a, an event area so that we are both working, working towards, towards each other, oh. working towards the rig or working away from the rig. So like, and we've, We've done this before, and I just, you know, I'm thinking back to Legends in 2020 in Phoenix, outdoors. Right. There was a workout where we had bar face, we had a box, burpee box jump overs and squat cleans. Right, right. And I just remember Justin LaSala was the guy I was trying to pace off of in that workout because he's quick. So Justin, if you're listening, you're quick. And yes, I was totally trying to pace off of you because I knew that would be a winning strategy. If I just stay with you, we'll, we're going to do well. But he was literally on the opposite side of the floor. So we would do some oh, cleans. I we'd f- come to the center and do some burpee box jump overs. And then we do cleans on the opposite side. I so remember I, that. Okay. My direct competitor was not next to me. My direct competitor was on the other side of the floor behind me. And that made for an interesting style. I don't know if that's what this will feel like, well, um, but it could be interesting that way. All I know, you've stepped foot inside that. Uh, you know it's big. Yeah. And the fact it's, that that's all I know. There yep. are going to be there's going to be plenty of floor space. So for those yes. disappointed where we're not outside, you know what? <laughs> yes, you're inside. Be glad you're inside, and be glad you have a a competition venue large enough to accommodate whatever yep. they want to put together. And bring a sweatshirt. Bring a sweatshirt. You're right. Because uh, it's going to be chilly. Pack that, yes. Bring a sweatshirt. Athletes, um, if any athletes are listening, uh, we, we did announce this uh, on, the, on our Instagram today. Legends reposted it for us, which was great. Uh, we will have a Boulder Athlete uh, Recovery booth. We've got a 20 by 20 area that's just outside of the athlete village or the athlete camp, which is where you'll set up all your stuff. That's kind of your home base with tables mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, you'll be walking from the competition floor past our booth to get to the camp, you know, when you're going in and out the the whole day, we will have three ice barrels there uh, with chillers. So this will be very cold water. Um, This doesn't have ice. It has, these are chillers. So so plan to plan for that. Um, If you need to hit an ice barrel for a cold plunge post workouts, uh, just bring a towel, bring your own towel. We, We can't, certainly can't supply 600 towels, um, but they will be, they'll be sanitized. Um, and we'll be using all the um, all that's recommended to make sure that it's a clean environment. We'll have that. We'll also have uh, three stations of Norma Tech boots. Uh, if there's a line, there's a time cap of 15 minutes, so you can sit down, throw those compression boots on. We'll have massage mm-hmm. guns there as well. Uh, those are partners: um, Ice Barrel, Penguin Chillers, Norma Tech, uh, Hypervolt. They, they've all provided those for us to use while we're there to support you guys. Mm-hmm. So they're awesome partners. 
we'll have samples, we'll have element, we'll have giveaways, we'll have third Z. Just you know, anything you think you might need to recover, we'll try to have that for you. And in the morning, we'll have coffee. So if you need coffee at four in the afternoon, we'll have coffee okay. there as well. It's fine. You'll, um, you'll be fine. I just want to share that there a lot. <laughs> I out. mean, it's gonna seriously, it was like, can we bring a fourth ice barrel and put that you yeah. know, in a separate spot. So I, I like my own personal, but no, that's not how it goes. If I want to ice barrel, I will be doing it there. And uh, I think it's going to be really cool. I mean, certainly something we want to do to support the masters athletes there. All athletes are welcome. And I mean, you know, honestly, if you're a volunteer there and you're feeling beat up and you need to jump in the ice barrel, just come, come on over and jump Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Um, the, yeah, that's the only other thing I had on my notes, Rick, was right. that we just, we expected to see based on the phone call last week, with the organizers, a workout or two to be released early this week. And we have nothing. It's Tuesday night. I keep checking my email to see if we have breaking news and there is not an email in there. I'm checking one final time and uh, nope. (laughs) <laughs> there's nothing nothing so let's move on to our i just i want to follow up on this so if we have our recommendations if you have one a great if you don't have one think of one while i talk about my recommendation oh uh, boy i know you're just just you know, have to think about it and if you don't have one that's okay i wanted to follow up three weeks ago on our last podcast i mentioned the magic five swim goggles sure, okay sure, so i, I right. ordered these these were custom goggles you, you do this like picture of your face and it, they create custom goggles to match your exact face. I mean, this is a brilliant idea. And I have a sad, sad story to say oh. that they did not fit my face. They, they sat literally right on my eyeballs. Um, and they were the, they were the most uncomfortable goggles I've ever worn ever. Interesting. Um, now, um, this may not be the case for everyone. This is my experience. I think the idea they have is just fantastic. But mm-hmm. what I, I, I'm not even going to speculate how they make goggles. Well, I am going to speculate. Okay, this that's how I think they do it. I think they measure your face and they have like four or five different sizes. And based on your face measurements, they send you one of those sizes. <laughs> they are not for $100 for three sets of goggles. They are not customizing Customize, something yeah, exactly. for this face. Yeah. Even though it says it is, they're not. They, if my eyes are the same distance apart as yours and that that's you and I get the same goggles and yeah. if they fit, they fit. If they don't, they also make them really hard to return. And that was frustrating. Oh. Like I, I went swimming and I just, I got in the pool first lap. I mean, there's just no good <laughs> at all. So I immediately get my old goggles, put them on. I finish my swim and, uh, and I contacted them and they, you have to go through all these processes. And again, it's just to make sure that there's not user error, which is fine. Uh, but I did have to ship it back. Uh, on my own dime, I had to go to the UPS store and have them create a shipment <laughs> for fifteen dollars. It took to to ship a box, which is super annoying. Just, I mean, honestly, order ten pairs from Amazon, and whenever it doesn't work, send it back for free. That would be my advice yeah. if you're trying to find the right goggles. Yep. But I tried to get fancy, okay. and it didn't work. As I just well, wanted to give a follow up because I said I would. Yeah, be, that's good. Being the king of technology that you are, it is interesting <laughs> that not everything does work, and you know it's. It's okay to return items. I mean, there's no sense collecting yes. collecting all that stuff, wasting the money, uh, and doing that. Such um, a bummer. Okay, and the wine is not. It's funny you say that. Now I do have something, but it is here. It, it goes. Is, it is eye related also, and uh, although it's only for those people that wear glasses, new new frames, and only I'm pointing that out is because I need frames that don't slip off when you're exercising. And the daily frames I've been wearing, I have battled against them for a while. And I train, try not to train in them just because, you know, they'll slip and fall off when you're sweating. This pair, got it uh, late last week before I traveled. I like it. Just need one little tweak, little adjustment, take it back up to the store. But for those glass wearers out there, you know how important good fitting pair of glasses are. When you're upside down in a GHD that... You go backwards and the glasses don't go flying off. So I am not going to return these. I do like them. I just need to get them adjusted a little bit. So I will be ready come Birmingham with glasses on my face that are going to stay on my face. So And they're not so swimming. So the moral of the story is glasses that fit are a good call. It's really Absolutely. nice to have glasses it, it, that it fit is. and that won't come off. Won't not come off with swimming. All right. It drives me nuts. We will uh, we'll send this straight to Justin Medeiros because I think his glasses came off a couple of times at the games. And oh, uh, we'll sell that guy. Interesting. Yeah. They stay yeah, on the clean ladder, I, though. 
for the clean ladder, he made it happen on the hand, freestanding handstand. As he came up from that last handstand, I think he did like one of those Dan Bailey grabs his mm-hmm. glasses out of the air while he's running up yeah. onto the stage. I think he caught them, which was pretty, also pretty fun. He's Skillful. aware enough to just grab those. Skillful. Skillful. Yep. <laughs> See, cool. he, he understands the uh, the pain that glass wearers go through. Okay. Man, it's, I, I tell you what, like I, I can only wear gl- contacts. I cannot wear glasses with, mm-hmm. with the th- issue I have with my eyes and there there's times when I'm jealous that I can't just wear glasses like oh. it would be so nice to take out contacts they get uncomfortable and just put glasses on but at the same time I mean the oh. grass is always greener so I'm just gonna stick with the contacts they're fine say, they don't come out there are many times I either wish I had LASIK which I still I guess I could or I could wear contacts and I wasn't able to wear contacts early on so <laughs> there are many times I yep. wish I wasn't in this position so you're right you and I all right opposite Tell the opposite. Well, Rick, um, yeah. great to see you, man. Like, um, good to get a podcast out of the way. I think we'll have another one on schedule next week as we prepare right. for the games. We'll know more. And we'll know more. And we get to talk about it then. And Until then, man, I'll see you then. And I will tell yeah. you, have no fear. We will have more more guests on. Uh, you know, the timing yeah. will be right. And I think everybody will be excited to uh, learn some more about uh, some of the guests that we have, have coming up. So until Absolutely. then. Have a Until great then. night. See you then. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to the Masters in Motion podcast. We'd be so grateful if you could take a moment to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or your preferred podcast app. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Your support helps us reach more listeners and grow our Masters community. Until next time, get bolder, not older.